Anthony, one of the two men who has really dominated the tour in recent years. Classic confrontation now. And he likes this pair of wings. Arnie Goldman is going to have to do what we say is pump up. He's got his hands full. I know Earl Anthony, watching those first two matches, figures that all he has to do is show up sometimes to win. But remember, Arnie Goldman is bowling well, and by no means is he a pushover. Come on, Arnie! Come on, Arnie! Each man starting with a strike. I'll tell you, if Arnie can start with a double against Earl Anthony, he'll do a lot for his own confidence, and it'll, it'll make Earl toughen up. It'll make Earl think about something. If, if Arnie throws a bad shot here in the, in the match, uh, he's going to build Anthony's confidence. You know, Anthony has not had the best of it on TV lately. In those last nine matches, David, he's only won one match. He's one and eight for his last two years on television. I like his chances, though. Thank you. <laughs> the Thank you, anybody, right? I agree. It's amazing how the, they say there's no defense in bowling, but when you're bowling against a Mark Broth, an Earl Anthony, Dick Weber, you have a tendency to pressure yourself. You should bowl yourself, not the opponent. But that opponent is so awesome, sometimes you press. That's easy to say, Bo. <laughs> Here's a young man out there who's 25 years old. And he listened earlier today when they said, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the bowler of the decade. He heard that. <laughs> and he can see it. And here's why Earl Anthony is so good. Now, notice how he takes very little time. Many of these young players on the tour are taking a lot of time to bowl, Dave. And see, Earl's gone. He looks where he wants, he knows what he wants to do, and look at that perfect form. Everything perpendicular to the foul line, straight through. Earl Anthony's also doing what an experienced player should do. Get up way ahead when you can in the early part of the match. Same shot we saw last night. He rolled 289 against Mark Roth in the final game last night to secure second place. Two years ago, he rolled 289 against Mark Roth on this same pair to secure first place. So you know Earl Anthony likes this pair but his one nemesis is that seven pin. Earl Anthony, quickly out in front by nine pins over Arnie Goldman. And the first test of this match comes for Arnie Goldman. Arnie Goldman, the man they call the space cadet. Why do uh, they call him that, David? <laughs> I'm supposed to ask you that. He just has a little different style than the rest of the players. Like they say downtown Racine, Ohio, he hears a different drummer, doesn't he? <laughs> but he's bowling real well right now, David. Trails by nine, could even the match up or even take a one-pin lead through four frames. You notice how this match has turned around. Since he changed balls, he's hit the right-hand lane very well. Now he's struggling a little bit with the left-hand lane. But he didn't do badly in his last match at 224, and he had eight strikes and finished very, very well. Steady performance. Hardy oh, Goldman with a double. He has seized the one-pin advantage over the master, Earl Anthony, and we'll be right back. Earl Anthony, an infrequent tour performer for this season. Right squarely in the pocket. Earl Anthony, who is marks with his right foot, is standing approximately on the 20th board, the center board of the lane, and rolling the ball right around the first arrow. That's almost about a two-board head belly. Look at the position, power position, nice and smooth. Look at the extension with his arm swing. That's what Dick Weber was talking about, that his son should be doing, stretching it out. Does Earl ever do it any differently? He looks almost mechanical. Look at Got a good break there. Knocked out the pin, David, that you picked up. The nemesis Earl Anthony is a seven pin. He now takes a nine pin lead. You know, I'm sure you've been on the tour with him for years, and I'm sure he must have an occasional slump, but every time I have seen him out here on the tour, it seems that he's like a robot. There's very few things that stop, or uh, variables in the game that stop Earl Anthony. The only thing that I would see that really stop him is super dry lanes, but he's been able to adjust to those in the last couple of years. Did he jerk up there? Did just lost Goldman it all. Goldman jerk up. 
lost it all, left the 3-7. He just did not get the lift on the ball. He missed to the right, he elbowed the shot, and look at the ball. Now, he got that ball back before from out there when the ball was lifted properly, but when you bend that elbow before you release the ball, no finish, and he got a disaster shot, 3-7. Do not leave the door open for Earl. And he picks up the seven, or the three, but uh, he now, after... Talk about how the game changes. He was trailing, he was leading Earl Anthony by one. He now trails by 23 because Earl put together a double and Arnie is open in the fifth. Arnie, keep his game together. He hit this left-hand lane last time. Just forget that one mistake and try to put some pressure on Anthony. See you later, Dave. And you know what's causing this? Not so much Arnie Goldman. Earl Anthony, although people don't believe it, in the professional ranks, when you bowl against a top player, there is a defense. His very presence is actually influencing Arnie Goldman's stroke. And he's letting it get to him. He should be concentrating on his own stroke and forget about Earl Anthony. Now he's in real trouble. I suppose it's like a young pitcher comes out and he faces the old Boston Red Sox and he has to look up and find Ted Williams number nine a menacing figure there I agree they can be that way now look at her he was staying down real well with the shot before there he's letting his arm get away from his body Earl leaves the seven as you notice Earl Anthony's ball was breaking a little sharper last night in the match play and that's the uh, reason he was carrying the seven today the lanes are a little slicker and he's going to leave the seven pin a little more often earl change balls to a much harder ball to skid it across lane to shoot the seven pin he may just go ahead and use that ball for a strike ball It'll be interesting to see what he does earl is always thinking out there and now he's going to use what he's using plastic balls both of them one is a very hard 